No, I wasn't recording that. Do you want to do it again? Really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you press the button, it says record. I turned it around and the thing's not recording at all. Right, now basically what I was doing this morning was uh, um, saying we've got seven days to go and uh, we better show you how to have uh, over unity that can be built in China and how to cure all diseases. Um, we've got our clinics up in New Guinea and in Fiji. Uh, cures elephantiasis, uh, diabetes too. Uh, diet, if you change your diet to coconut and that kind of thing, don't cook with anything with coconut oil and don't eat meat. Um, and I was an SE and I still am. And um, I'd like to make a, a few points for uh, John Lennox because um, you've got Jesus is God is Lord talking to the Old Testament but what you've got is the Pharisee account which is the same people well they're not the same people actually the same belief system of the Babylonians that was behind it all and the Talmud and you can prove that Christ is a man by the protocols of Zion, protocol number uh, 14. There's 24 of them there, the most diabolical things that are the basis of Freemasonry. And Freemasonry, uh, although the uh, King James was Catholic, as was Edward de Vere, they uh, were nonetheless very familiar with Freemasonry and especially the king who was raised by Freemasons after his mother was exiled. And uh, later on the same Freemasons beheaded him via the hand of Elizabeth. Uh, so he's a king begging for his mother's uh, life and yet the uh, monarch who should have been subservient to Mary, the true queen, uh, they had to get rid of him. So they beheaded him. False chance, of course. And um, when James was nominated, it was the influence of Edward de Vere on Elizabeth to say, if you want to go to heaven, you better forgive your sins and uh, repent of everything you've done, in particular the murders, beheadings and all these things that she'd done to people throughout her career, as did her father. So uh, she became queen under bloody circumstances of falsehood. And uh, then James, the sixth of Scotland, became James I of England, horrified the politicians and the Puritans who looked upon Scottish people as being dogs, were stuck with a king that only ever did one thing, signed the uh, authorisation for the King James Bible after he had read it and altered the manuscript with Edward de Vere over a thousand times to put in the uh, codes. I'll give you one. If you go to your Bible and you punch in uh, Lord, I mean, the original only. I've got it, it's on CD. The closest is the Bible gate, Gateway, it's only out by one. And you put in the word Lord, and it comes up in the Bible Gateway 6667. Right. Now, in the original, it comes up 6666. And that becomes a mathematical clue, and you start to compile the the numbers of repetitions of Jesus, 942 verses 973 times. And you would expect that God would be able to put in the good stuff in the Bible as is the Freemasons put in the evil stuff, which is Babylonian, uh, Talmud, Khazaria, Jews that are not. They're not Jews genetically, and they certainly, if they were uh, Jews that practice the Talmud, they're certainly of the devil, and if they influence anything that uh, like we will forbid Christ in their protocols which was 
inadvertently exposed and the plans were exposed um, when a courier was struck by the lightning in Brussels or something and the, the police got hold of this. So um, things like that. You see the divine hand comes down and bolts the lightning, you're dead. See you later. And then the police are inspired to pick it all up and read it and see what it's all about. So this started a tremendous movement because it was now known. But the Catholic Church, of course, takes it on and uh, also is taken on by Freemasonry. Now, Freemasonry is, when you get to the 33rd level, you are invited to become the 33rd member and uh, you've done very well at it by then. And then you're told that uh, God is Lucifer. So, um, we have this uh, built-in code, but what happens is this. Before all this happened, before creation happened, before the earth was formed, I dreamed it up. I created the angels, I created the souls, part of the mother and father. If you look in the Bible under um, Groves, it's been changed, it used to be Asherah, Ashtree. And you go to um, 44, 14, Isaiah, and it's the only Ash mentioned. And you'll find that from where Ash was living um, to the area which I've declared the holy city, um, the distance to a solar eclipse that was occurring at that moment uh, was um, 4414 kilometers, I think. So, uh, my youngest stepdaughter uh, got a tattoo on her wrist. What would Jesus do? Well, my simple answer was that uh, I wouldn't really do an asthma because she didn't believe me. So, um, I love your work, John, um, but what I've given the world thus far is. Uh, 70 years or February years, Mayan years, that takes care of Kuku Khan. I've been down there with the Yucatan, talked to the natives down there. So I am Kuku Khan as well. And then I've got the Hindis, we did that in Fiji, and I'm Kali for them because it fulfills the prophecy of Jesus, which was uh, the apostolic churches that first formed when uh, uh, the Armenians were visited by the apostles and uh, they become a uh, Jesus nation, absolutely, no other religion. Um, in 301 AD, and they're on Ararat, the Armenians. Huh? So I've chosen the Armenians as being, when you look at the original territory at the time of Revelation, um, the area of Turkey is where the seven churches are, and one of those is the Church of Philadelphia, and that's called Armenia. So, it goes. so even if the Armenian didn't want that, it's not the point. I'm telling you they are. So we've got the uh, simple truths are what would Jesus do? Well, I'd cure every religion. I'd wipe, work out every possible code there is to identify the Lord. And then uh, this was after Mary uh, appeared to me and I was, as real as I am sitting in front of this camera, taken back as a uh, young fella coming back from Egypt. And she uh, told me that if the Jews, the Jews find out that we are Essenes, they will kill us. And we was coming back into Nazareth. So these things happened to me as a kid, and she told me I'm Jesus. Well, it's only after I finally read the Bible when I was 45 years old. <coughs> I didn't learn nothing at the Catholic school. Never taught the Gospels. Taught catechism. What the hell is that? And of course they knew the royal family was coming through that school and of course when I left there they demolished it. And my father had been to that school and uncles and aunts had been to that school. So there's about um, oh, seven times I've tried to kill me. I've done it with all sorts of things. Uh, cyanide, 
car crashes, log and truck accidents off cliffs. Uh, they, they watered down this road. It was a long ski slope. And you've got to, when you're on it, if uh, there's any water on it, not before, it freezes into glazed ice. It's all right when the trucks have been on it, breaking it all up. You're down to the mud. So at this particular time, I'm sent out there, first trip ever out there, didn't know where I was going. Just follow that car on the road. Next thing I'm off. Upside down in the bush, 185 foot into where I've been. And uh, the top of the truck's ripped off by a tree, and I'm up in heaven. I've written this out many times. It's on the YouTube somewhere. I've, I've manipulated it, changed it a little bit, so forth. So let the trolls come in. Like I said, I was an atheist. So, so the trolls love that. And what the trolls do? What I said on radio. I was telling the story of how I crashed this truck. I said, from the perspective of what's been taught in the churches in the whole world, I would have to be an atheist. So when I'm crashing this truck, I said, well, God, here I come. Because when I go up there, I've got to come back because it's only God, Jesus, come a second time, they can fix the world. That was uh, the morning of the 15th of uh, February, uh, 1978. I was 108 days older than the lifespan I'd lived as Jesus. One, two, three, four, five days plus 108. And then if later on, years later, 20 years later, I get the equipment to measure everything that happened on that day. How old it was and, and uh, what stars were above, etc. Well, it all spells out Christ. Right? So my biggest target was I wouldn't be able to uh, uh, get anybody to believe me. So I thought, well, I've got to have some other means of communication because you can't do it standing on a corner. And so I just sat back and let it happen. As it turns out, that as life unfolded, meeting different women, having children and so forth, um, this became a rather extraordinary genetic link to Mary Magdalene, who was back on the earth, she doesn't know and doesn't believe it to this day. <coughs> and uh, her children are linked into witnesses as being, I have never backed up. I've always said the same thing. And of course I've been ridiculed by not only my family, but Michelle's family. However, Trinity, the youngest one, she will be 8.888 years old next week on my 69th birthday or 70th birthday in Hebrew years. Now that's important because it's also Mayan years and that links us into Kukka. Then you've got the crop circles, they're all met, well, not all of them, but uh, a lot of them are uh, angelic. And uh, you see the node on, the, on the, some of these stalks would grow up and make a, a left turn instantly and that's how they stay. And so we've got people saying that uh, how did the virgin birth occur? Was it natural? Yeah. Was it Holy Spirit? Yeah. Was it angelic? Yeah. Was Mary told beforehand? Yeah. I might get four different versions of that, ten different versions throughout the time. But the point is, we talk about a virgin birth. But it also has to be the seed of, uh, through the male line of Jacob. How can that be? Right. The Holy Spirit delivers all the chromosomes, 22 of them. There's your word, word of God, 22. Uh, I'm 22 inches long when I'm born. 9 pound 12, that's how many times a word. Uh, well, that is another percent. The average age of the patriarchs is 912 years. And on that goes, but I was 9 pound 12. That gives you mathematical formula again. Uh, so the date this occurred, for example, I'll, get, I'll just get off the subject because we'll talk about that later. This is better. Uh, my brother was 8.88 years old for me, less a couple of hours. The sunrise to sunset for my birth was 8.55 minutes. Back in time, Carl Sagan in his Easy Cosmos suggested that the Star of Bethlehem may have been alignment of Jupiter with Venus, because that's the two biblical numbers, right? Why? 
well, Venus is the morning star, and the wife, and Jupiter is 88,800 miles of triangle. It's actually 88888, but I don't like to tell you that. Too perfect. Anyhow, that was June the 17th, 2 BC. Sunrise to sunset was 855 minutes, and this moonrise was 33 minutes later. The same occurs in Sydney when I'm born, with the moonrise 855, then 33 minutes later for a total of 888, 8.88 years after my brother. He was born on the 25th of February, 1935. I'm more inclined to think it was the 24th. No, 26th. And they know who we are, so they've altered the numbers. So I think he might have been born on the 26th. Doesn't matter in the end, it's near enough. Because the, on the 25th, the sunrise to sunset was 780 minutes, and my name is Brian Leonard Marshall from the Marshall side. Value 197, that's determined how many times the word Jesus as the Hebrew name Joshua is found in the Old Testament, 197 verses. And it was Joshua who led the people into the Promised Land. Not known to. So we end up, I'm crucified a second time, take a bit cross and follow me. And um, then we've got saints like yourself that's got to be able to look at it logically and speak to people that uh, are going to be dead very shortly. Just give them, give them a wake up call. Dawkins, for example. I was thinking of putting one up in, in, in uh, about the death of Dawkins. How he died horribly. Let's do it today. Because the certainty is going to happen. So uh, all the prophecies point towards Armenia and 5,500 years ago they found a slipper dated 5,500 years ago um, which is to do with cave of treasures where there are uh, certain relics that Armenia has that, that are very, very potent and uh, similar to the Ron Wyatt discovery in 1982, when I was 1982, which i just before my birthday. Uh, he discovered the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, I've just made a video now, uh, three, on how you can cure the world of all diseases. But in it you'll find, you've got to be very careful, only the righteous can drink this. If anyone else drinks it, they ain't righteous, they're dead meat. I've proven that a couple of times. And what I wanted to say, basically, is getting back to the Bible, it's full of numbers and codes, for example, 31101 is a number derived from the King's Chamber and the measurements in from the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid. And the Great Pyramid is the centre of the Earth geographically. And it represents Isaiah 19, 19, 19, 20 in the midst of Egypt and pillar to the Lord and the border thereof. It's the only place on Earth it can be. Great Pyramid. So you take all those numbers Grand Gallery, straight through into the far wall, over to the displacement factor, King's Copper, straight up to the ceiling, times illumination, gives you 31101, divided by 7, it's 4443, and that's how many times the word God is found in 3877 verses, and the hospital I was born into was 3877 nautical mile, or miles, to the south pole. The home I grew up in is uh, 105, which is Eagle, Angel, Rothschild Avenue, Rosebury. Now, Rothschild. Hitler is descended from Solomon Rothschild. Cinnamon, uh, to many, many perversions has been in the modern world. Anything good, they turn it around. Protocols of Zion. And Hitler was the same. And there was no people killed in the way the Jews said they were killed. It's all bullshit. I have seen witnesses, and you can find them too, 
of people said it was like living in paradise. It's been protected from the bombing of Berlin because Hitler had no problem with uh, the Jews at that moment because they had influenced all the banks and turned the world into corruption and pornography and, and uh, perverted everything. And he said, they're like maggots, so they have to be weeded out. But he had children in chance, and children need parents. So the idea was to brainwash them. With kindness, love. That's what he did. All you had to do was read the first four or five pages of Mein Kampf and that's it. Speak to David Irving or uh, Ron Finkelstein. He's a Jew who hates being a Jew, and so he should. His mother and father didn't die in the Holocaust. They survived the Holocaust. How come? How come it's been four years in it? Like you'd be in the gate in the, and in the ground within minutes, straight in the oven. Get rid of it. That wasn't the idea. He had many of his uncles and aunts die, cousins, I believe. You know, those concentration camps, that's where the typhus went through. And they were starved, they were emancipated. If they were so uh, evil, why would Hitler feed them? Well, the reason he didn't feed them is that Germany didn't have food because the English had bombed all the production of food. And then the typhus got into them. That's what it's all about. So, if you want to talk about the Bible, um, I'll give you one example. Is God telling Moses to kill a man for picking up sticks on the Sabbath? That ain't me. That ain't Jesus. How about this one? This is in Leviticus, and uh, well, I'll just read it to you. You play it punch and foul, and feet. Make it easier. Legs. And you've got where it reads four legged fowl with feet below their legs. You can't eat. I'm a vegetarian. So, John, uh, what you do is just uh, get as much of my stuff as you can and you'll find that uh, I abuse and curse and swear and tell people to fuck off and uh, all sorts of things. I offend as many people as possible because the more people I offend, the more the word gets out. This is so in Australia. And out they go. They start sending things out. I said I was going to kill all the homosexuals, for example. Oh, did that ever get some knowledge? Homosexuals will kill themselves. They'll either bow their knee and start repenting because there's no more homosexuality in paradise, I'm sure. Only way you're getting in is being 100% righteous. And we've got a little drop of blood here, which I've made up in a few uploads prior to this. We'll do our own one. Um, how people drink the cordial silver that I make, and uh, it's got my blood in it. And I'll cure you, and then you'll drop dead. Ron Wyatt, who discovered the Ark of the Covenant below the cross after an earthquake, but the blood run down during the storm, washing all the blood from the spear on the left side, got the shredder to rent backwards. Dribble down through the crack with the volcano, where right, there's earthquake it hit, and on the Ark of the Covenant, which had a stone slab on top of it, it split that, and the blood dripped through onto the mercy seat. Later on, four Israelis went in to retrieve it, and they were struck and dead. And Ron Wyatt had to be flown out from America to bring the body down. He's the only one who could come in. 
It's the kind of thing you've got to know if you start to uh, understand the Bible. Now, there's several accounts of the crucifixion, several accounts of the stone, all the women, angels. Read the four Gospels, and there's many more Gospels, by the way, which are also eyewitness. Some people, when they tell the story, it gets watered down a little bit after 100 years, and uh, one remembers the angels, one remembers the star rolled away. Now, Ron Wyatt found the uh, tomb is very close to the cross. Yet pilgrims go there and they have no idea. They're looking for a tomb that they built a bloody church out. Constantine's mother. So the, the rolling of the stone away, you'd think, well, how big was it? Five foot tall, covering a four foot hole? It's 13 feet, two inches wide. It was held in with a pin, pin that was an inch and a half thick. And it was sheared off. And the stone rolled to the foot of the cross and lays perfectly flat before the foot of the cross, which was a special hole that was chipped into the stone of the rock. Above the two, a thief hanging by my side, either side. Well, there's a hole there as well in the centre, but it was lifted up and put into a new hole. That's scripture coming out here. So everything had been prepared. Right? It was a new cross. New cross piece. A full moon and it turned red. But where did it turn red first? The brightest of it was passing international date line past New Zealand, 888 miles between North and South Pole, uh, North of the island and South of the island, and that is Jesus in Greek geometry. Yeah? And then it was directly over where I would be born in 1944, January 5th. So you have to look to um, the code is in this wonderful work because I wanted to say that these people that are suffering uh, when they reach their limit the angels take over and then the horrors that come Isaiah being sawn in half in a tree for example he would better do that but I wouldn't let Abraham sacrifice his son either so he's taken up and the angel takes over and surely got a body somewhere around. So all of the prophets that made it into the King James Bible is counted by the Talmud that is oral from Babylon, Mishnah, and it is an abomination that was clearly identified in the protocols of Zion that are saying that we will prevent Christ, therefore admitting that Christ is coming back as a man. So, uh, in just under seven days' time, um, it's my 69th birthday, or 70th Hebrew years, or man years, and uh, that's as far as I'm going to go. I could be out of here.